today I'll be showing you how to open one of our graphic templates in Photoshop at the correct dimensions. Now uh, Photoshop works on pixels, there are only so many pixels that they have in the program. The default settings of Photoshop usually set everything to 300 dpi um, and what happens is when you try to open one of our 10 foot templates um, there's not enough pixels in the program to actually open it at the correct size. So I'll be showing you how to do this um, to, so that you can design over the top. So uh, once you've decided on the display that you want to purchase, um, let's say it's the True Fit Curved, you would go ahead, click on the product, scroll down. Under product details, you'll find the graphic templates. So you'll want to be downloading the backdrop template to start with. Download it here. Let's save it on my desktop. There it is. And so you'll want to just drag and drop this into Photoshop. It will open up the import PDF window. Um, and these are the typically the default settings. Now, if you uh, preview the template, you'll notice it actually gives you the dimensions here. Um, this is already sized to these dimensions, so it says 126, 91.5. If you look here, it's only 106, and, and that's, like I said, it's due to the resolution um, being at 300, which is default. There are only 106 inches worth of pixels available at this resolution. So what you want to do is first change this to 125. That's the minimum resolution uh, for large format printing. Um, and that will work you know, perfectly fine uh, for what you're doing here. Uh, then secondly, you want to change the color mode to CMYK. Now this is based on inks available in the world as opposed to RGB, which is uh, light-based um, and mostly used for digital. Finally, you want to change the crop to box from bounding to media. And it's not quite 126, um, but it's basically you know, 126 inches there and 91.5 there. Um, and what this final uh, crop two box does, um, that actually allows the, the bleed that's been added onto the template already, that allows that to open as well. And, and outside of this dotted line here, that is the bleed that we've added on the template for you. Okay, so once you've done those three things, you click OK, we'll load up, and there you go. The, the template is now opened in Photoshop at the correct size. You can see uh, you've got your layers down here. What you do to, to start designing, you can now uh, start dragging and dropping images or creating new layers and you know, perhaps making your background colors, whatever you want it to be. Um, and you, actually, whilst we're here, I've just made this backdrop black. And you'll see that this black here is kind of a grayish almost. Um, for CMYK, the best colors for printing uh, black are going to be 75C, 68 for M, 67 for Y, 90 for K. Um, and what that does is ensure it prints rich black instead of kind of this dark gray brownish color. Um, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind. There you go, much better. Okay. Once you've done your design and you're ready to, to, to save this file uh, in Photoshop, best bet is to first flatten the image, make sure you've hidden or deleted the template first. Flatten the image, that's going to save on your CPU and make the file a little bit more reasonably sized. We prefer it to be saved as a TIFF, um, so you can name it whatever you like. Um, but save it as a TIFF if you're using Photoshop. If you're using uh, Illustrator, just save it as a PDF, that's fine. And, and if, if you decide to, PDF's fine here as well. Photoshop PDF is okay. Um, but we say TIFF just because it, we can control the file size a little bit better, and that will make everybody's life a little bit easier. Um, once you've selected where you want to save it and the name, and you've selected TIFF, it's going to open up the compression settings. Um, usually it will say none, that's the default. Just select LZW, that's going to reduce the file size, you know, if you've got multiple large images in there, you could be looking at a one gigabyte file. Um, adding the LZW compression, that's going to bring it down to under around 200 megabytes um, without compromising the quality of the image. Um, everything else 
uh, default settings will be fine. Uh, and you can just press OK. And then sending that file to us, once you are ready, <clears throat> first you would place your order. Um, and once you've done that, you'll you know, complete through the checkout. Um, and uh, you'll get given an order confirmation number. When you have that number, that's when you can upload your file. Head to the website again, click here, top right, upload files. You can fill in these details. The email here, um, it can be different to the email that you put in the, the order, um, but whoever you want to be uh, approving the artwork, this is the email that you need to put in. Um, and then the order number, this is where you put in the order number. You can add any notes if there's any information Particularly if it's uh, double-sided printing, for example, you can say uh, that you want the same artwork printed on both sides, or um, if you've got multiple banners and you'd like the same artwork printed on two and then a different one printed on one, you can indicate all of this information here. Um, but yeah, this is where you would upload your file. Desktop, there's our TIFF. And you can see it's only three megabytes, but then it was just a plain color. Um, and then finally, once you've filled out all of the information, you've chosen your file, you can click send now. Now, when you do click that, be sure to wait until it's taking you to the confirmation page. It will also email this email address to confirm that the files went through successfully. If you don't get that email, um, chances are uh, it timed out and it didn't successfully upload. So just go ahead and do it again. Um, if you're having difficulty, we do have an alternative for uploading, and this is also for larger files. So this portal can take up to two gigabytes. If you have a larger file, um, you can see the link just here, display.wetransfer.com, and you can head there. And here's actually a little bit easier. You can drag and drop it. Um, and again, you can add your email for where uh, for your email or someone else's email, and there's a notes section as well. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video.